There's a few things that can deliver you less desirable results, and these are the 5 weapons that feel lackluster. The beauty of Genshin Impact is that nearly every weapon can be used strategically as long as it finds its true master. But for the time being, some of these weapons are either awaiting for a new character that will be able to fully utilize on them, or they can be outmatched by using free-to-play options. And one of these weapons who are still missing their master is the Bell, which has one of the worst substats in the entire game, and out of all the Claymore users that are available, only Beto's shield benefits from the health substat, and that's only for a few seconds when she's about to counter her enemy attacks. Now unlike another weapon which which is the Thrilling Tales of the Dragon Slayers, that also shares health as the same substat, you would think that the passive skill is at least game-changing, but unfortunately, it's very limiting and it doesn't help the fact that it has a massive 45 second cooldown. And in a world where the Spiral Abyss exists, having a cooldown of nearly 1 minute in exchange to get a shield that can be broken in a few hits is not the best deal you can get, especially because the attack boost you get from the passive also depends if that specific shield is active. It also doesn't help the damage increase you receive since you're basically losing out on a better offensive substat like critical rating or attack percentage, and it really makes you question the design behind this weapon. Of course, the redeeming factor is the defensive capabilities the weapon provides, and for those who struggle with staying alive, could prove to be useful, but in terms of squeezing out damage, especially on those awesome Claymore attack multipliers every user has access to, it's a hard sacrifice to go for. Let's just hope we can see an interesting Claymore character in the future, which scales their talent multipliers on health, so those of us who ended up with more than one copy of the bill can finally return it to its rightful master. For a sword that has the word handy, it sure doesn't live up to its name, even after Albedo arrived, and while the defense substat is a nice addition to make Albedo's Solar Isotoma's bloom damage go up higher, the lackluster passive skill combined with the fact this is a 3 star weapon, which has a limited lifespan that usually ends when you can get your hands on a serious 4 star weapon. Of course, a lot of weapons are simply used for their substat and naturally, Albedo is currently the only sword user that takes advantage of defense, but there are better options which includes another 3 star weapon called the Harbinger of Dawn, that actually is on par with some of the other 4 star weapons if you have it max refined, which is not something you see often in this game and only few 3 star weapons are capable of doing this. Of course, there's also festering desire that any player could max out during the limited 1.2 event and even then, something like the Skyrider sword is still better for him since higher energy recharge from the substat means you can trigger his burst more often and you don't need to rely on his bloom damage. Either way, this is a sword that definitely under delivers and the only mildly interesting thing about it is that it's the the only sword in the game that has defense substat, and unless a character comes out that fully depends on defense, this is probably going to be the most niche weapon in the entire game. Also, if you want to find more useful tips about which weapon is best for your character, make sure to follow us on Twitter, link in the description. If there's one weapon that actually looks good on paper, then it would be the Ferris Shadow. And while the health substat is not exactly the best thing you can get, especially as it was mentioned previously, there's only Beto that benefits in a very specific way, the only thing that's left about this particular Claymore is the passive skill. And one thing is pretty clear, getting any of the 3-star weapon max refined with enough time is going to be achievable, so taking advantage of the extra 50% damage from charge attacks when your character falls below 90% HP is definitely an enticing offer, especially because of how cool the actual Claymore looks, compared to something that's unfortunately ugly like the Debate Club. But the phrase, it's what's inside that counts, couldn't ring more true in this comparison, and the club in every single way outshines the weapon without needing to rely on charged attacks, which not every character prefers to do, and it even gives a better substat. And then there's Prototype Archaic, which is like an upgraded version of the club, so if your biggest concern is to deal big damage numbers, it's not really advisable to use Ferris Shadow unless you're truly out of options. And as mentioned before, the only way weapons like these have a chance of staying relevant would be the release of new characters that scale their abilities with health, and as of this moment, most of the Claymore users are busy beating up their enemies by simply relying on raw attack, except for a few gentle ones like Noel. After the arrival of the Freezing Mountain, Dragon Spine Update brought along three new craftable weapons, and while two of them have been surprisingly good so far, one feels a bit out of place, and that's the spear named after the mountain itself. And the biggest problem with this weapon, while it is actually pretty decent, it just feels like it was designed for a future polearm character in mind. And you could argue that physical damage bonus it provides is exactly double the amount Crescent Pike gives, which on paper sounds good until you actually put the weapons to practical test, and you can clearly see how faster and superior 
where Crescent Pike feels thanks to its passive skill. It just feels like the physical damage bonus needs to be taken advantage of besides using the normal attacks, and we already have a character like Shinyan who scales her burst damage based on physical damage bonus. But if there wasn't Crescent Pike to compare to, of course this weapon would be great to use for your main damage dealer, even if we literally only have two spare users with Xiao who's coming out pretty soon, but we'll infuse his damage with Animo when he goes into the burst mode, so it basically leaves us with the option to just wait until a character that can actually take advantage of the massive substat bonus. So unless you're dead set on using this spear, the Crescent Pike is a safer choice to go for and this might change when we get a polearm character that depends on physical damage bonus. You can say what you want about the weapons, but every one of us are in a unique situation and you could be starting out or you could be just someone who's stuck on grinding those artifacts and just keep getting too many of those defense drops. And objectively, the only weapons that are truly the worst are the 1 stars, even if they promise you they can break the mountains apart. But anytime you dismiss a weapon, it's always a good thing to reflect on your current situation and especially the amount of copies of the weapon you have, since making these comparisons is extremely hard when you start including the refinement level and you won't find that many weapons that are functionally in since most of the time, the passive skill has a pretty big influence over your gameplay. And yet, a weapon is the direct extension of your character's power, and when you have so many good choices, it's actually a very good thing it's hard to find a bad weapon, and even then, some of them like the Bell or the Dragon Spine Spear are really there to just get picked up by the right character. Let us know in the comments which weapon do you feel is underrated and why. Also, don't forget to subscribe by hitting the bell notification on and gently pressing the like button. And for more quicker news and guides, make sure to follow us on Twitter, link in the description. Thank you for watching us.